Okay, so let's take a brief look at the differences between job order costing and process costing. So if you remember when we did job order costing, we had a single work in process inventory control account and it, that account was supported by all the individual job cost records for each job that was being worked on. So um, direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead were assigned to individual jobs, which all were collected into one work in process inventory account. And then when that job was finished, those costs flowed directly into finished goods inventory. When the job was then sold, the cost flowed out of finished goods inventory and into cost of goods sold. So a job cost system has the following characteristics. The work in process inventory control account is supported by individual job cost records for each job. And then the uh, direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead are then assigned to the individual jobs. And then when the job is finished, those costs flow directly into finished goods inventory. When the job is sold, then the cost of goods sold flows out of finished goods inventory and into cost of goods sold. Now process costing, if you recall, is typically when we have a homogeneous type product. So perhaps we're making um, toilet paper. Uh, we'll have one process to make all thousands and thousands and thousands of rolls of toilet paper or we're making Pepsi Cola we will have one process that makes a lot of Pepsi so we're not making a lot of unique individual type items we're making um, fairly few homogeneous type products so prob process costing systems typically have the following characteristics they go through a series of manufacturing processes the cost per process is accumulated and moved from one process to the another process. So we will have multiple work in process accounts, one for each step in the process. Now the cost per process then is accumulated and moved from one process to the other. The, uh, once the final production process is complete, the finished products are then transferred to the packaging process. And when the finished product is packaged and put into various boxes and bags using uh, additional labor and equipment. Then the boxed and bag products are transferred into finished goods inventory which is where they remain until sold. So in process costing costs are transferred into finished goods inventory, inventory only from the work in process inventory of the last manufacturing process which will probably be something like packaging. And then those transferred costs will include all costs assigned to the units from every process that the units have gone through. Now with process costing, managers use the cost of each product to help control costs. For example, they can compare the actual cost of producing to the budget or plan. So if costs are running too high, they can always look for ways to reduce costs in that particular process. Managers also consider the total cost of making the product when setting prices. So the price has to be high enough to cover the cost and also to return a profit for that particular product. So the total cost to produce a product is the sum of the cost for each of the processes. So the following benefits of knowing your process costs are that you compare, can compare costs across production ba batches to determine if costs are rising or falling comparing budgeted against actual cost to see if plans are met and this is something we will do later in the semester. Comparing cost of production against pricing decisions, something else we will also look at, and creating a cost basis for ending inventories on the balance sheet and cost of goods sold and the income statement. So you can see in this particular example the different types of processes that jelly beans will go through. So the first process is to, to make the centers and then the second process would be to make the shells and finally the third process just overly simplified would be packaging. So there's three basic processes involved with making jelly beans or jelly bellies and then you can see here the costs associated with each step in the process. So again, just to reiterate, when we use job order costing to determine the cost of producing unique goods in relatively small batches, and this can also apply to service companies as well, like law firms and hospitals, they can use job order costing as well to service the, or, um, determine the cost of servicing individual clients. So in job costing, you've got your direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead, which are all costs posted into inter 
individual job records. And then the total cost of all the job records are added together that represent your work in process inventory, which is what you see here. And then um, they remain there until those units are completed, at which time it moves into finished goods inventory and then ultimately into cost of goods sold. Under process costing, instead of tracking cost by individual jobs, we're tracking the cost by processes. So in order to accomplish this, the process steps have to be identifiable. So there's going to be separate work in process accounts for each process along the way. Here's our Jelly Belly example, the three processes. So we will have individual work in process accounts for each and every step along the way. Then as each process is completed, for example, we complete the centers, we take those costs and we move them into the shells. And then we add additional costs to that, and then we move it into inventory. So we can do this by accumulating the cost of each process and then assigning those into the units that pass through that process. So in process costing, the manufacturing costs are assigned to the product must always follow the physical movement of the product. Therefore, when units are physically transferred out of one process and into the next, the costs assigned to those units must also be transferred out of the appropriate work and process account and into the next. So remember, process costing is generally used for products that are homogeneous and made in batches, usually low cost too. So the uh, units are virtually identical to one another.